Okay guys, another quick uh, video tutorial. We're going to study the orb uh, in, in greater detail than we ever have before. Um, first I want you to uh, familiarize yourself with the, our solar system. Um, right here is our asteroid belt. Then we have Sirius. Um, uh, Sirius is a dwarf planet. I don't know if you knew that we had a dwarf planet right here in our asteroid belt, but we do, right between Mars and Jupiter. Um, now over here is the Kuiper belt, back behind a Pluto. Eris right here is also a dwarf planet. Um, but we're wondering, or some people are wondering, if Vista, which is a, a large asteroid, is actually uh, what we're picking up in the orb. Well, I'm going to go into great detail about Vista and Ceres, but I'm going to use NASA's own propaganda videos uh, to kind of help um, help me explain and help educate you. The reason why is because I don't own my own satellite, so, <laughs> so I have to rely on uh, NASA's tools. Um, but Vista which is a very large asteroid, is located in the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter. And here's Sirius right here, Earth down here. Now Sirius is a, a dwarf planet. So, um, and again, I, it is not the orb that we've been studying. Now these are some other asteroids uh, that are known. But notice, I'm going to let you take a moment to look at them. Notice there's not a huge, huge, deep impact crater on any of them. Um, one of them <laughs> I jokingly think of as the space of Viagra because that's what this looks like. It looks like some kind of pharmaceutical. But notice the different sizes, the different shapes, the different colors. Uh, this one's yellow, this is greenish, this is bluish. I mean, that are actually quite beautiful. This one is a very, very dark, kind of a dark grayish black. Um, but these are the known asteroids um, that we're aware of. But what we've been looking at in the all sky cams, that orb, it doesn't match the description. But let's, let me um, show you a quick video tutorial I put together for you guys. Um, it kind of explains it better. Okay, let's start it here. Um, we're going to start on July the 28th, and we're going to go um, previous month and previous month, so you can see that. Um, now, I wish I could put some music together for you, but uh, YouTube keeps telling me I can't put music because it's copyrighted. <laughs> but I think this would go better if it had music to it. <laughs> It would be a lot less uh, uh, quiet and boring. But anyway, notice the, the, the deep impact crater right there. You can really see it. Um, this is I put the time lapse on slow so you can take a really good look at it as it rotates out into the sky. Now remember, the, an orb is a reflection of one of the planets of the moon or moons in the Nibiru system. Um, so the orb is a reflection, but in that reflection, it gives a tremendous amount of detail. Um, and the tremendous amount of detail that we're noticing is that huge, giant impact crater. Now, on, on this, I left the good, the bad, the ugly, and even the bugs, because I wanted you to look at it as if you're looking at it from your own telescope. And hopefully you guys have... Uh, hooked up your telescopes, gone to a pawn shop or off eBay, got a cheap reflective telescope, and you've hooked up your either your cameras, your cell phones, or you've got a pair of binoculars um, that has a camera in it, or you've gone uh, the other route and bought your own webcam for your telescope so you can look at these images yourself, take them yourself, and study them yourself. Notice the plasma that's coming out from behind the sun. The orb is giving off a tremendous amount of heat. 
And notice I left the clouds in because when you're looking at through your telescope, you're going to see a lot of clouds. But notice, <laughs> I'm sorry, I got to make jokes, but it's true, you're going to see a lot of clouds. But notice as the time lapse goes on and the day goes on, it gets fainter and fainter. Uh, the best time to see those orbs are in the morning time. Um, it used to be the best time to see the Nibiru system, um, which would be to the west side of the sun, was in the mornings. Now you can see it in the mornings to the west side of the sun and really good in the evenings on the east side of the sun. Um, now this is from June the 28th, so this is one month previous. Again, you see that little black dot starting to show up right here in the corner. I don't want to put my cursor on it too much. Um, but watch it rotate out into, in, into the sky. And notice as the day progresses, it gets harder and more difficult to see it. And I hope you guys have this on full screen because it's so much better to see. If you got it on a little screen, <laughs> it's going to be very difficult to see. Because, again, we're looking at the images and the reflections of that orb. There's that uh, big, deep in impact crater, or the black hole in the middle of the orb. It's just rotating out there in space, right into us in the sky. Plasma right over here in the southeast quadrant. More plasma. That thing is giving off a tremendous amount of heat. Notice you even see pink behind the sun. This right here is more plasma. As the day progresses, it gets harder and harder to make out details in that orb. More plasma behind the sun. It's coming through through the clouds. Barely see that little hole right there. Okay, this is, again, another month previous. This is May the 25th. Notice the time lapse starts off around 10 o'clock in the morning, a little after 10. See that deep impact crater right there? Right there at the top? See right there? Another uh, all sky cam. This is uh, May the 24th. See it right here. Very, very deep impact crater. As it's revolving in the sky, lots of plasma coming off from behind the sun. More plasma. Okay, May the 25th. This is starting out at 11 o'clock in the morning. Another all sky cam, May the 26th. Look how deep that impact crater is. Look how deep that is. 
as we're watching it rotate in the sky. That one almost looks like a little Pac-Man out there. <laughs> I gotta make jokes, I'm sorry. But it does. That's a deep, deep impact crater. as it's rotating slowly in the sky. Now some NASA propaganda, but again, they have the satellites and I don't. The dwarf planet of the dawn has been orbiting for more than a year now, providing us with fascinating views of the alien world. During its exploration, Dawn has moved closer and closer, allowing us to get a broad overview and then see exclusive detail. This is Aruna Mons, the highest mountain on Ceres. Towering in an otherwise unremarkable area, it seems very odd that it rises so sharply, and the geologists still don't know why. On its steepest side, it soars three miles higher than any peak in the continental United States. Colorado Crater, one of the brightest regions on Ceres. It's about 21 miles across. Its well-defined shape indicates it's relatively young. The impact that formed it only occurred in recent geological times. You can see a substantial amount of bright material, which the latest analyses indicate may be a kind of salt. This is Osho Crater, which shows more of this intriguing bright material inside and out. Well, it's a peculiar shape. At six miles in diameter, this is the second brightest feature on Ceres. You can see next to it an intriguing linear feature called a slump, where a massive material has dropped below the surface. This is Overa Crater, about 105 miles in diameter, although not the largest on Ceres. Although many craters have a mountain in the center, Overa has a prominent double feature. Surrounded by rough terrain and living in parallel grooves. The Katoa Crater, 57 miles across and 2 miles deep. As dawn closed in, what initially looked like one spot became two, and eventually a multitude of features. This reflective material makes it the brightest region on Ceres. The crater also appears to be among the youngest on Ceres. Dawn mission scientists estimate its age to be about 80 million years which is quite young in geological time. Dawn is now orbiting over 240 miles above Ceres, which is closer than the space station is to Earth, and it will continue to return spectacular views. I'm going to stop this right here so, you can, uh, so I can read it to you. Uh, this is an animation based on data from NASA's Dawn spacecraft it starts with high-resolution black-and-white images of the giant asteroid Vesta wrapped into a 3D-shaped model and transitions to false color images. The colors were chosen to highlight the differences in the surface composition that are too subtle for the human eye to see. Um, I put this in here. Uh, I hope this doesn't confuse anybody because of the colors. But again, they put NASA put the colors in there because the the composition of the surface is so difficult to see. Um, but I hope y'all don't think this is part of the Nibiru system because of the the colors. It's just that Vista is uh, well, <laughs> it's an ugly gray asteroid and it's difficult to look at. Um, so that's why they put the colors in there. But I did want to stop here and make this perfectly clear before I, I, I put on the VISTA. So um, this is the asteroid VISTA. Let, let's see NASA's presentation.
I thought that was pretty cool. Um, I thought you'd be interested in that uh, because I've been getting a lot of questions about, you know, could uh, that orb actually be Vista or could it be uh, Sirius? Um, and I said, I, <laughs> I said it would be, it would take too long for me to explain it to you in an email. So let me do a video on it, a video tutorial, so everybody can learn together. And again, these are the known asteroids. Uh, that was a vista that we just saw, and it, it all of them have impact craters, but no deep, deep impact crater like what, what we've been seeing in the orb. And it's not the uh, dwarf planet Sirius. Um, but I thought that was very interesting, and I, I thought you might want to see that. Um, I also wanted to leave you with some information for August because I'm hoping you'll have your telescopes hooked up uh, with cameras. Uh, this is another NASA thing that they put together. What's but up for August? See five planets after sunset and the annual Perseid meteor shower. Hello and welcome. I'm Jane Houston Jones from NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena, California. In case you missed the January-February five planet lineup in the dawn sky, you might have better luck this month. From August 4th through the 7th, spot Venus, Mercury, and Jupiter, and the Moon, low on the western horizon about 45 minutes after sunset. On the 20th, the three planets make a pretty triangle 5 to 10 degrees above the horizon. Look in the south-southwest sky for a second planetary dance. Mars and Saturn are high and easy to see and are joined by the Moon on August 11th. But wait, there are more planets, dwarf planets, and an asteroid visible this month. Uranus and Neptune and dwarf planet Ceres are visible before dawn in the southern sky. You may see Uranus through binoculars, but Neptune and Ceres require a telescope. Asteroid Pallas is visible high in the southern sky at the same time. Dwarf planet Pluto is still visible through a telescope after sunset in the southern sky. The constellation Perseus is visible in the northern sky soon after sunset, and the famous and reliably active Perseid meteor shower peaks in the morning hours of August 12th. The moon, which paired up so nicely with Mars and Saturn on the 11th, is bright enough to blot out some of the meteors, but lucky for you, it sets about 1 a.m. on the morning of the 12th, just at the peak time for the best Perseid viewing. So you'll see the most meteors after moonset on Friday morning, August 12th. The days on either side of the peak have elevated rates too. And even a week before and after the 12th, you'll see some Perseids. While waiting for the moon to set and Perseus to climb higher in the sky, aim your binoculars at some of the beautiful nearby objects from within our Milky Way and beyond. The Milky Way's Perseus double cluster and the pretty globular clusters of Cassiopeia can all be spotted with the unaided eye. The Triangulum and Andromeda galaxies can also be spotted with the unaided eye, but binoculars and telescopes reveal more detail. Catch up on current planetary missions and space telescopes studying our Milky Way and all of NASA's other missions at www.nasa.gov. Guys, I really hope you get your telescopes out. I really hope you get uh, your binoculars out. I hope you go out there and see the beauty that is all around us. <laughs> I want you to enjoy life. I want you to be happy. And until we meet again, uh, I'll talk to you later. Y'all be good to each other and love each other. Bye-bye.